thanks everybody for staying for the second part. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, about two different packages in the Flutter universe today. Wait, there is a problem here. Okay. Uh, but before uh, I get started, a few words about myself. Uh, my name is Sylvia Dickman. I am a technical manager, although I'm currently not working as such. Um, I'm just doing a bit of freelancing work. I do app development mostly for my own enjoyment uh, for these kind of talks and to play around. Um, I have done a ton of different um, technologies in the course of my career. I started in the back end, I did enterprise work, I did uh, some web work, uh, but most recently I did first Android and then for the last year and a half or almost two years now, I'm stuck on Flutter and I like it more and more. And I am based in Stellenbosch, uh, but today I'm actually calling from uh, Isiani in Italy, which explains why everybody else wears a hoodie and I'm here in a light t-shirt. Uh, it is boiling hot in Italy. Um, yes, and I'm, you already know I'm one of the chapter organizers, but you might not know that I'm also a Women Tech Maker ambassador. Uh, the Women Tech Maker program is a program by Google and uh, the mission is to um, work towards gender, better, better, better gender diversity in the tech industry. And you know, that's of course close to my heart. So, and then finally, it's a good habit to open this talk with something you might not know about me. So, the fun fact for today is uh, I started baking my own bread long, long, long before it became popular during the pandemic. But during the pandemic, I added making my own yogurt to it. So. Now you know. And um, by the way, um, I'm, as I'm traveling, I'm traveling lightly. I only have my old creaky laptop here. I don't have a second screen, so I can't see the chat or anything. Uh, but I'll catch up with anything you might comment after the talk. So, um, cameras. Um, this is pretty much every app I ever built or wanted to build has some kind of uh, camera function. So here is an example from my Tree Finder app. If you listen to my Firebase talk about half a year ago, you know about this app and about the problems of Christmas tree farming in Germany. If you don't know about it, ask me offline. But in this app, uh, and it's basically a novelty game, and it's quite simple. Um, and, uh, you know, players kind of look through cards of different Christmas trees and, and comment on them. So a typical user story is like, as a player, I want to upload content so that I can grow the game and kind of share the experience with the other players. Uh, and I want to do that as smoothly and quickly as possible. And, you know, this is just one example, but this type of uploading images, I come across pretty much in every problem I ever address. Uh, when faced with this uh, user story, you basically have to go through three or four steps. Number one is um, you need to capture the content from the camera and write it to a local file on your device. Or alternatively, identify the device, that, the, the content that's already on your device, typically via the gallery. So you browse existing content and identify the file. Step two is optionally. Uh, as optional, you may decide to allow the user to manipulate the image, for example, cropping or adding filters to it or rotating or so. Um, but you know, you don't have to. Uh, the third step uh, is not optional. You know, at this point, you only have a temporary file on your local device and you need to find a way to save it to permanent storage. Um, I often use fire storage for that, uh, but there are many other options. You can run your own server, you can run it, to, you know, send it to S3, whatever, you know, the world is nice. Number four, uh, once the file is in the permanent storage, you have some URI to it and you need to store that URI so that you can retrieve it again. So in my uh, tree finder example, for example, I have these kind of card records that have all the information about one playing card and I would save uh, the URI that I uh, retrieve after uploading the file to fire storage. I would save that with the record. So for this talk today, we're only going to talk about the very first step. Um, I'm not going to talk about uploading the content to permanent storage. Instead, I'll just, in my demo, I just display it on the screen. 
uh, as a proof of consent. The rest is, I think, well documented, and I'm sure you'll figure it out if if you want to work on this. So um, I know there are a few Android developers in the crowd, so let me just very briefly recap. Um, whenever you know you want to do anything in Flutter that's outside the extreme Flutter core, you start adding packages. Uh, you extend um, <clears throat> your code base with with third party packages. These packages are typically publicated uh, published on pub.dev. Um, they're rated and commented and you know you just browse through what's on offer and find one that's kind of mature enough and and seems popular enough and that solves like a large percentage of your problems <laughs> so in this case when it's about image upload or, or camera operation you quickly come across two different packages one is called image picker the other one is, is called camera um, both are very mature. They've been around for three plus years. They have been doing the entire time constantly updated. It's always something I'll look at at the release history. So you, you know they're not dead, they're, they're continuously maintained. Both are written by Google's Flutter dev team themselves. So that already gives me a little bit of trust. Both have a large number of blog posts that cover kind of how to get started with image picker, you know, write your first app with camera. Uh, you know, they are definitely pretty mainstream. But uh, the functionality is a little bit di uh, different. Image picker focuses mostly on supporting different media sources and different media type. With media sources, I mean um, the camera or the gallery. With media times, I mean still images versus video. It even recently uh, allowed multiple picks uh, when you use gallery. Um, image picker launches basically when you when you activate the plugin. By the way, I'm using the terms plugin and package and library fairly interchangeably. There are small differences, but um, I want to get into technicalities. <laughs> Um, so when you launch this plugin, um, you basically hand off control to the plugin completely. Um, at launch time, you have to you have to already specify what you what you want to launch. You know, do you want to have like you know pick a video from the gallery, or do you want to take a still image uh, from uh, from the camera? You have to specify that as launch at launch time. But then from there on, you're handing off control. Uh, the plugin takes care of uh, designing the screen and you know presenting a shutter button or a start stop button for video and so on. Um, that has some some advantages, but also some downsides, as I think you'll see later. Um, on the camera side, uh, there is uh, it, the. the Camera plugin gives you a little more direct access to the native camera layer, I feel. Um, you, you need to build the UI like yourself. And it's actually very similar to what Maya and Ishmael just showed uh, in the Android world. You, know, you need to take care of kind of building the button that releases the shutter or uh, you know, presenting the preview in a, in a way that makes sense for your app. That's your responsibility. On the other hand, you know that's that's that is a bit of a responsibility, but it gives you also a little bit more power. Um, for example, um, what I thought was was quite smooth is toggling between media types, uh, between a still image and a video, is uh, quite easy if you implement it that way. Um, however, a camera has no gallery support. Nothing. Uh, you need to find another solution if you want to access the galleries. Um, I feel that uh, image picker is a little easier to set up um, because basically so much is controlled by the plugin themselves, itself. You don't have to do much. Uh, camera takes a little bit more work um, and especially it requires some understanding of state management to get it correctly. Um, I think a lot of the blog posts that I looked at uh, were kind of very high level and, and focus on a very simple case. and wouldn't really work for some corner cases in production code, I'm pretty sure. But I mean, none of this is insurmountable. And, you know, it just requires a little more attention and a little more testing. 
And finally, uh, the last thing I added while I was listening to, my, to Ismail, because I completely forgot to mention um, that one of the requirements is you have to lift your Android minimum SDK version to 21 or above. I think there is no restriction on image picker, but to be honest, I can't remember. I checked briefly in the documentation. I didn't see anything, but maybe I just forgot about it. All right, um, I have a little demo now. Uh, unfortunately, my laptop is not good enough for a live demo, so I recorded a video here and I'll just talk you through it. So let me pause very briefly and explain what you're actually seeing here. So, so this is a demo I built uh, in the last couple of weeks kind of in preparation for this talk. Um, it's really only demoing what I'm talking about. And it's all, by the way, it's all released. The code is released on GitLab. I'll publish the link later. So you can dig through it yourself if you want. Uh, in the main screen, I have added a few buttons to activate the different scenarios of the image picker and picker and the camera when I'll talk about image picker first. Uh, and so here I have image from camera, image from gallery, video from camera, video from gallery. Now let's, let's start. All right, permissions are taken care of. And now what you're seeing here is uh, I'm, I'm taking a still image with image picker. So you see a lovely piece of my hotel room. Um, and everything you see here comes from the plugin itself. I guess you could, if you really wanted, uh, dig in and overwrite some of this, but you know, most people don't bother. You basically hand control over the, to the plugin and then let the plugin deal with it. So for example, in this case, the plugin adds a button to switch to front view camera. All right, let's continue. Um, now I did actually take a picture. And the next part is something I built. So this is just a little review of the picture I just took, just so that you believe me, I actually captured the picture. Um, in a normal application. Like, let me quickly rewind a little bit. So this is now picking a still image from, um, from my gallery. And as I'm traveling, I have a lot of travel pictures on there. These are truly houses in Puglia in, in, in Italy. Next one is a video from the camera. Okay, again, the tour of my hotel room which has a power plug under the ceiling, don't ask me why. And then a little replay of the same video. I hope I convinced you that I actually captured it correctly. And then the last one is capturing a video from uh, your gallery. So now at this point, you're only presented with videos in the gallery, which is already nice. And I picked one I'm showing it. I think I, I realized when I watched this one that I probably messed up the aspect ratio in this review. I think it looks a bit stretched, so I would have to check on that. Yes, so, so this was for image picker. Now let's do the same for, this is always a problem, for the camera. Um, very similar demo. Uh, we have a single button only to activate and then, you know, quick permission check. Um, I always choose only this time, so I keep getting asked the same thing again. And now, uh, let me pause again, because I think this is quite relevant. So what you see here now is the plugin gives me kind of the a view, a preview of what the camera sees and then everything else I have to do. So I display my preview here. And I'm also adding these buttons, which then kind of pass controls through to the plugin API. So I'll call the plugin API. So here on the left, I have a button to take a still image. On the right, I have a button to uh, start and pause a video. So this is a very nice way of kind of toggling, allowing the user to toggle between still image and a video. So I took an image, it gets displayed very quickly. 
and then on the next call I'm taking a video and I think in this case now the video is actually recording um, I don't even show the, the timer or anything and I probably should have disabled the left button once the video starts recording but hey it's a demo All right, that's the recap of the video. And okay, uh, now you know what the goal is. So uh, let's look at some code. Um, I'm going to do a few things now. So the first thing is, you know, we have to. But basically, <laughs> I assume there. I mentioned before, I assume there are a few Android developers in the crowd. So I'm not going to go too deep into the Flutter code. Just to give you a brief, a brief outline, um, you get started by adding uh, the right plugins um, and peripherals. Um, you, I then add this, these two widgets uh, to just display an image from the local path. And this is just for the demo. I do it for both uh, together. And you know, it kind of is a prerequisite to see anything, but it's not really necessary for, for using image picker or camera. And then the more relevant parts is um, for the Android. So, so both packages in their documentation have like little things that you need to add for Android and for iOS, including like lifting the minimum SDK and doing a fix to the manifest. And for iOS, you typically have to add some, some keys to info.plist and you know, that's all about permissions. And then uh, it's all about adding actually the calls to the main screen, and I'll start with image picker here. Dependencies are pretty trivial. This is actually for both, for the entire code together. I have camera and image picker. And then the other three, path, path provider, and video player, have to do with, with replaying the video or the, the, the content. Um, the image review screen is uh, quite trivial. Uh, there's a bit of syntactic sugar, a bit of sugar in there to, to draw a margin and, and a frame and whatever. But the essential part is uh, I'm passing in a path, open that as a file. So path to a local file, open that as a file, and then pass it onto an image. Uh, video screen is very similar. It's a little more complex because it has to be a stateful image. Um, and, and that's because you need to initialize the video player first. And then once that's initialized, um, you can call it, I uh, even, can't even see where my path went. Oh, the, the path was already set up during the initialization. Um, and then I have a floating action button here that uh, pauses and plays the replay of the video. All right, so that was our prerequisite. Now it gets a bit more interesting. This is the main page that had the four different buttons for image picker. Um, Image picker button is, is a widget I wrote myself, and I show that in a second. Um, it gets called in four different permutations with different image sources and different image types. Now, what does image picker button does, do? Um, in it's it's a simple stateless widget that in the build method it's basically an extension of elevated button. And all I'm doing is kind of extending the on-pressed method. Um, and this is actually the call to my plugin. So if I'm after an image type, I call image picker pick image and pass in the source, which might be a gallery or camera. If I'm after a video, I do the same, but I call pick video. Um, these have to be blocking calls, and then the return is either an image or a video. And you know, once once that image or video is returned and is not null, then I can do something with it. In my case, I'll just call the review. You can add lots of other parameters here to pick image and pick video. Like in this case, I added the max duration, but yeah, you have lots more options. And this is it. From this on, basically everything happens in the plugin. There is nothing else you have to do. So uh, just a quick recap. This is what you saw in the video. Here are my start buttons. This is what the, the plugin then makes of the pick an image. And this is what the plugin makes of pick a video from the gallery. 
Um, so far, so good. If you do all of this, uh, it probably won't work. It didn't work for me. And then when I dug through the code, I came across this platform exception. Um, and it turns out that in order to make image picker work, you have to add a query intent to the Android manifest. And you know, this is fairly standard, but for a reason that I don't understand, this is not mentioned in the documentation. And I was not the first person to run into this. There are lots of people, lots of lots of questions dealing with this on Stack Overflow. Um, so this is basically uh, giving the plugin the permission to, to access the camera. Okay, so so much for image picker. Now moving over to camera. Um, the camera plugin is uh, a, a little more complex to set up, and uh, because there is a little more code, I feel that it's it's a bit too involved to discuss the entire code here, kind of on slides. So I'll kind of breeze through it, but I urge you, to, if you're interested, look at my GitLab repo. Um, and look at the code yourself. I think you know you'll you'll figure it out quite easily. And if you have questions, please ask me offline. Um, the reason it's more complex is that I have to implement kind of access control myself, and also any possible extra functionality like toggling between the image and the video, and displaying the video and the button in the correct state, and so on. Um, so this is what we want. Uh, we want a simple, simple uh, a single button to capture, to basically to, to activate the plugin, and then we want to display the camera preview with some action buttons on it. Um, so, and you know these can be. So I did it super cheap here. I mean this like play and stop for video button is not really sufficient. I think it's not terribly user friendly because it's very hard to figure out what's going on. But I mean you can do this, you can, you can do all kinds of stuff here. It's just your responsibility. Right, so what do we need to do to get started? So I built my own stateful widget called camera shutter, shutter screen. And that's probably not the best name, I'm going to stumble over it. Anyway, I have my shutter screen. Um, it's because it's a stateful, uh, it needs to be a stateful widget because the uh, camera plugin needs some initialization. And this is actually a little bit of a problem because some of the initialization is asynchronous and needs to be blocking. But in its state, uh, for a stateful widget does not allow you to do uh, blocking calls. So the trick, um, and this is kind of, there are lots of posts, medium posts dealing with this blog posts. Um, so it's well documented. The trick uh, is to put the blocking code into a separate function I'll call it the setup camera here. So here you actually block. So you await for available, available cameras. And this would be, for example, the part where you can choose kind of which camera to use and so on. I kept it super easy. And, and only when this initialization is done, um, you set a flag and you call set state. And then in your init state, you call this function, but you don't call it blocking. So what happens really is init state runs, finishes, and then all the setup happens on the side. And eventually the setup is done, called set state again, and forces a redraw of the screen. And so at this redraw point, then the rest of the code knows the camera is ready and the preview is, is, is ready and, and you can use the shutters. Right, um, there are a few more things, but I wanna focus on the build method here. Um, I have my super simple scaffold with an upper, uh, a body and a floating action button, which is actually turns out to be a row of floating action buttons. And the build content is, um, I'm doing a few checks to make sure my initialization is completed. And if it has been completed, I call the camera preview. Uh, but this only gives me the preview, nothing else. No, no kind of release button or anything. The, the floating action buttons is where I'm actually taking the picture. 
Um, I'm only showing one of the two here. I, if you remember, there were two, one for still image and one for video. And because the video one is a little more involved with kind of changing state and so on, it didn't fit on the slide, but I'll show uh, the, the still image one as an example. Um, and really there's not much to show because all I'm doing at this point is I already have the controller. I know it's fully initialized and I call take picture uh, which returns the still image that I just captured, the local file. And then I can do again whatever I want with this. In this case, I'll pass it on to image review screen, although normally you would pass it on um, to permanent storage. Right. I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm running out of time, so I won't go through the videos again. But um, what I what I want you to take away from this is really the look and feel is quite different for the two different packages. And um, I mean, the, the bottom one um, looks kind of ugly and you, you have to do that better kind of in a production ready app. This is really a demo and it looks like a demo. But, you know, you have you have lots of controls over it. The top one it looks like it is and it's going to be a little more complex if, if you don't like what you get here. All right, now is the famous disclaimer that comes at every end. Um, both variants need to, a little bit of work to handle uh, Android lifestyle changes, uh, li life cycle changes. Um, they are in the code. I just don't have time to, to discuss it here now. Um, I also uh, have not put any work into iOS, into setting up iOS. Uh, I have done it in other projects. I know it works. I just uh, didn't make it part of this demo. I hope that's okay. But I mean, I, I really, I can guarantee uh, your iOS production code will also work. However, I can't give any guarantees for Flutter Web. I have not tried that yet. So if you're on your own. And I think if I, if I remember, I read through, through some comments, they might, it might not be completely trivial, but I don't know, you're on your own there. Um, I think the rest I mentioned already, yes, there are lots of different options uh, you can use to restrict kind of the image type or the image size or video length and so on, uh, which, which makes it quite interesting kind of depending on your app needs. So conclusions, um, for me, there's no doubt image picker is easier to set up. Um, that camera is potentially has the nicer user experience. However, only if you actually accept uh, the challenge and implement it. Um, if you do kind of a very basic uh, demo like I did here, it might not actually look that slick. Um, the one aspect of uh, uh, UX, the kind of the, the choosing of the media type, the, the toggle between a video and a still image, I think is so much nicer if you're already looking at the preview than having a button before you even enter the preview where you have to, to kind of choose a video or a camera. So I think that is a big one for me. Uh, however, camera does nothing about uploads from gallery. So unless you add another package to the mix, uh, that might be a problem. Um, either way, uh, both packages, I've really tested them in detail now. I consider them extremely mature and I would absolutely recommend either one. Which one you like depends completely on your, your personal preferences. In my particular case for the tree finder, I knew I did not care about videos, but gallery uploads were really important to me. And that meant I ended up with the image picker. All right, um, here are a few resources. Um, the, the camera plugin is actually described in the official Google documentation and, and one of the cookbook plugins, but in a very, very simple form. Um, and then both image picker and camera uh, are well documented and have kind of a long issue list and so on. Uh, my GitLab repo uh, has all the code I demoed today. And I'm also, I might or might not finish. I have a half written medium post where I kind of summarize my work for this talk. So it's basically a written history of this talk. Um, 
as I said, I'm traveling at the moment and I chose to go on a hike today rather than finish it. So it's not ready yet. But if it gets published, it will be on my Medium account. And then uh, eventually uh, there are lots of different uh, blog posts and tutorials. I tried to single out a few, but I found that there, there are so many and they're all somewhat similar. And I don't even want to highlight one over the other. I think it's unfair. <laughs> so I let you do the Googling and, and figure out what works best for you. And that's it. Let me see if I can go back and stop sharing. And I'm going to share the link to my slides soon with all the resources. Thank you, Sylvia, for that lovely talk. Um, we have one question Ethan, by Maya, and she's asking, using the two plugins, do they have the same issues due to device inconsistencies similar to native Android? Hmm. Device inconsistency, that's a good question. Um, First of all, I might not be the best person to ask because, as you know, I'm mostly a hobby developer. So if it works on my device, <laughs> I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I did look through the issue list for both of them. And there are some people who report problems with very odd problems with very specific devices uh, that people have not been able to pinpoint. But I haven't come across these kind of typical Android issues, like I have a Huawei and my code doesn't work. Um, yeah. So I don't think Flutter quite suffers from the same problems than uh, you Android developers do at the moment. <laughs> okay. She asked the second question, was it easy to get a camera up on an iOS device? I guess you answered it with your disclaimers. It, it was, absolutely. Um, I have I have done it. Um, and it's basically, you just follow the documentation. So most of the uh, Flutter packages have like a, you know, a small section in their documentation and they read me about, you know, what to do on Android and what to do on iOS. And, you know, it's like a few steps, you know, at this line to, uh, your plist file and you know bump that number to 21 and uh, i was pretty happy with the look and feel of my app um, although i am not a designer definitely not an ios designer so <laughs> i would check with an expert on that but i mean technically it's definitely easy and possible okay thank you um, and I just realized I, I dropped my slide link in the Q&A. That was totally wrong, but I'll copy that over. Okay. Uh, one last question by Asha. Which bucket will we use to work with video streaming? Um, hmm. um, well, I wonder what you mean by video streaming. Um, I would think the video player probably gets you a long way. Um, it has lots of options for, I mean, it can handle different sources of video. So I assume video streaming, you mean kind of displaying a YouTube video or I tried on the web RTC as local. That I'm not sure how to interpret. The two ways a video streaming could be like video streaming and viewing, or video streaming like uh, you are the producer of a video yeah, recording, out recording mm -hmm. live mm -hmm. or so video calls. And... Oh, I see. Um, so if if you are recording and streaming live, I think neither package has kind of in their common use cases really. I think I think you only get access to the local file when you end the recording. I don't think it's meant for live streaming. Uh, live streaming or video calls. Um, maybe you can trick them. Maybe probably uh, probably rather camera than image picker, but I think uh, there might be better suited packages for that. I wouldn't 
trust to use this one. Uh, yep, that, that's about it with all the questions. Thank you again, Sylvia. And thank sure. you again to all our speakers, Maya, Ishmael, and uh, to everyone in the chat, uh, wherever you're tuning in. Have a good evening, good morning, good night, and hope to see you in the next event. Thank you and have a good night.